Hello everyone. One of the most important skills that you will need to master in your career is how to present your results. This will be extremely useful, for example, when you present a paper at a conference or during your PhD dissertation or during a job interview. However, how can we design a presentation and what are the best practices to do it? How can we make sure that you're going to be concise and at the same time effective delivering the points that we want to make across to the audience? So this is what I'm going to discuss in this video, providing useful suggestions on how to design a good presentation and what are the best practices. The first step to make a good presentation is to have a good structure so that you know how to organize the content throughout the presentation. Generally, if you want to present a paper at a conference, for example, or for a PhD dissertation, a common structure would be the following. You start from what is the problem? So what is the problem that you are studying? And secondly, why it is important, why it is important in your field, but also potentially why it is important to society at large. Then you should describe the state of the art and what are the current limitations of the state of the art, and then discuss your approach. So how you're going to solve this problem. Then you can discuss the results in which you compare your approach with the existing state of the art and showing the advantages. And then finally, you can conclude with conclusions and future work. There is one aspect here that it's debatable, which is should I have an outline at the beginning of the presentation or not? This is something that some people really like. I think it's a waste of time and doesn't really provide any additional content to the presentation, but it is up to you if you want to do that or not. One of the first important things that you need to realize and understand when you start designing your presentation is how much time you have. So what is the length of time to present your work? And this can vary greatly. Sometimes you may have five minutes, 10 minutes, 15, 30, or 45. And so according, of course, of what is the length, you should also organize your content. But one of the most important thing is that you should never go beyond the time. Because session chairs, for example, at conference are going to cut you off, and this gives a very bad impression overall. One good suggestion here is to make sure that when you are home and you're practicing, you are comfortable to present the entire presentation within 80% of the time. So if something happens, if you talk slower, if a question occurs during your presentation, you still have time to uh, present the entire presentation. In general, a golden rule is to have about one to two minutes per slide. So in this table here, you can see some example of what I think are good number of slides with respect of certain typical presentation times that you would find, for example, a conference. So for a 15 minute presentation, I think you should have between seven and 12 slides at most. For a 30 minute, you may have 15 to 20 and a 45 minute presentation, you should have between 20 and 30. So I have seen students coming to me, for example, for a 30 minutes presentation and show me a presentation with I don't know, 45 slides. So that is impossible. And if that is the current state of your presentation, work on it, shrink it before you even go to your advisor to discuss it. The third suggestion I want to make here is that you need to practice. Presenting is a skill that can be developed over time and is extremely hard to improvise a good presentation. And it is even harder if that presentation is not in your mother language. So you definitely need to have a plan about what you want to say and how you want to say it. And practicing is the best way of assessing if your plan is actually working, if it sounds nicely, if you are within the right time. When I was a student, I remember I used to practice the presentation many, many times, starting one or two weeks before the conference and up to the hour before I was going to present. With this, I'm not going to say that you need to memorize what you want to say, but you want to have a plan of what to say and how to say it so that your presentation is going to be smooth and is actually going to deliver the content that you want to deliver and you're not going to be lost when you're talking in front of many people that can also ask you questions. So important things to remember is to speak slow, breathe, speak loud and speak clearly. I also want to add that practicing is the best way of seeing if your slides are actually working and if the content that you are delivering flows well. 
Because as you practice, as you present it, you can hear it yourself and understand if there are some things that you are saying that maybe should not be said or something that should be said and that you are not saying or maybe you are not giving enough importance to those things. So practicing is also a way of feedback in the presentation design to improve it over time. I want to dig deeper now on how to deliver the content and how to design the presentation. So one first thing that is very important to realize, it is impossible in a limited time frame, such as a conference presentation, for example, to deliver every single aspect of your work. There is just not enough time. So what you really want is to give enough details to get the audience interested in your work so that after the presentation is over, they are going to read your paper to find out all those details that you omitted during the presentation. So what you should do is to guide the audience through the presentation to focus on the most important points that you want to make according to your plan. So you need to have a plan and then you need to find out how can I discuss this plan and guide the audience through the plan to make the most important points stick in the mind of the audience. Also, if there are some aspects of your presentation which are more important, so for example, you have designed a certain algorithmic solution and you think that a part of this solution is very important, it's very cool, it's something that uses some novel techniques that you want to make across, then explain that. Tell the audience, hey, look at this because I think it's something important that you should understand about my work. At the same time, you can tell them, hey, here we have a bunch of details, for example, a bunch of parameter settings or other details that we have done that you should not focus on this presentation. If you want to know more about that, you can read it in the paper. So here you really need to guide the audience and their attention towards what you want them to focus on. One last thing that you should understand is that in a limited time, there is not enough time to focus on very complex details. So, for example, if you have one or more giant mathematical equations or a very complex algorithm, it is impossible for the audience in 15, 20, 30 minutes to understand everything about it. So you need to find a way of explaining things at the intuition level so they can understand what is going on. And then if they want more details, they can read it in the paper. I want to now spend a few words on how to present the actual results. So first of all, you should explain the experimental evaluation. So how have you generated these results? Have you had a real testbed? Have you used simulations? Have you used real data sets, etc.? Then you should explain, at least at an intuitive level, how the comparison approaches that you are using work. And this is going to be important so that the audience can understand why the results in the next slides are going to look the way in which they look like. And finally, you need to explain each graph that you have in your paper that you want to present in this presentation. For each graph, you need to explain what is the x-axis, what is the y-axis, what are the different lines that you can see, and why we observe the trend that we actually see over there. So I have seen many students just saying, oh, see, as you can see from this graph, we do better. But the audience have no way of understanding what that graph means. What is the X? What is Y? Why? What is your line? What is their line? Why a certain trend is observed, etc. So you need to make sure to explain all these details so that the audience can actually understand the importance and benefit of your solution with respect to the state of the art. A small trick that I found very useful here is to say what is a good trend and what is a bad trend. So sometimes the audience doesn't even have enough time to understand the meaning of a certain metric. So you can simplify it for them and say, with respect to this metric, achieving an increasing trend is a good result while achieving a decreasing trend is a bad result. And then you can say, see, my approach goes upwards while the comparison approach, for example, go downwards. And that is an easy and intuitive way of getting the point across that your approach is doing better than them. I want to now provide you some suggestion on how to answer questions. So the first thing that is extremely important, you need to understand what the question is. Listen very carefully about what they're saying. Let them finish and then try to plan your answer. If you didn't understand what the question is, ask them to maybe reformulate or to say it again so that you have also more time to think and you have a better chance of understanding exactly what they're asking. I've seen many students do not giving enough time to the audience to ask their questions and just jump to an answer that maybe is not what they were asking. 
Furthermore, do not be afraid of acknowledging the weaknesses of your work. People may point out something that it is indeed a weakness. And then you can say, you are right. This is a great point that maybe we are going to acknowledge and address in the future work. Or maybe it's something that we didn't think about. And now this could be actually a way of having a new idea and then maybe publishing a new paper in the future. So acknowledging weaknesses is actually a sign of maturity and that it's a sign that you really know the work that you have done. Finally, some people may tend to ask a lot of questions. So they ask one question, you respond, then they ask another question on top of that, and then they respond, you respond again. And this can go on over and over and over. Generally, the session chair may intervene, but if they don't intervene, what you can do is, is saying, thank you very much for your questions. Maybe this is something that we can discuss offline. Also, because certain questions may become too detailed and the entire audience may not be very interested in such deep details of your work. Then when the presentation is over, you can meet with that person on one-on-one, maybe during a coffee break, and then discuss those details. Thank you very much for your attention and for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and see you next time.